All right, let's go. Um, so, uh, welcome and hello and uh, hello, Mr. Ilium. How are you doing with Ilium? Is it fun? Mm hmm. Okay. So the the Ilium is for the long term. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, that's uh, definitely one way that you can extract a lot of value from a character that you've already played for a long time. These days, uh, some people have a bossing mule that can, like, solo Gloom and Darknell, you know, that can technically <laughs> become a bossing mule again, so it's not like a character loses any of the big value right there. But you already have the experience. What level was the Wind Archer again? Yeah, early 250s, right? Yeah. So you already had a lot of experience getting through the game that way, and then the Ilium basically just, you know, followed in the in the footsteps, perfected some ways that the Wind Archer may have <laughs> fucked up a little bit in the past, which is normal if you're just starting out. So what have you... Um, have you come across some new things, some new questions with the Ilium that you didn't have before with the Wind Archer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's I think that's normal in a sense that you know when you see people with the smegas like looking for twenty five k people for lucid, a lot of times that's people who it's like their first character, so their hands are usually not as good. Um, they don't know the mechanic of the boss at all, and what people tend to do early right is they tend to spend way too much money on cubing, and then that inflates their stat quite a bit. And that means that you need more stat to achieve the type, the the kind of damage that you would want. And those, all of those things combined, all things put together, would make new people, you know, probably need over 20k, like closer to 25k stat, to have a party that could do lucid reliably. But of course, if you have a struggle party, if it's your second or third character, and you have like a group of five people who know the boss, and they're like barely 20k stat, they can probably kill it too very easily. Um, it's, um, it has to do with, you know, if you see the progression grid, it has to do with where the damage exactly comes from. And once you have more insight and it's not your first character and you're like going through the stages again, you'll have a bigger legion, you'll, you know, invest more in Star Force early on and not as much in potential. And if you invest in potential, you invest it in really good WSE, right? Usually like your WSC is probably way better than anyone else's around your level if it's their very first character. Um, even though they might spend the same amount of money in total on their account, you'll spend it way more efficiently and get way more returns for, for where you're spending it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and and in that kind of way, it's almost unfair to compare them to each other, right? Because, you know, in a way, yeah, you'll get stronger with less money and at the with way less time invested because it's a hyper burn. But that's kind of unfair to the Wind Archer as well because it had to struggle way harder with uh, you know with you at the helm and you weren't as experienced yet. And now the Ilium gets to shine way brighter, but you got to learn from all of the small mistakes or all of the things you had to learn while you were playing the Wind Archer. So you know to. <laughs> Keep, you want to keep that in mind where you're comparing the classes, right? And I, I'm sure they shine at different things. Like Ilium can fly around, is is you know can damage while you're flying around, right? That's something that the Wind Archer can't really do. But there might be some other stuff that the Wind Archer can do, like you know the the green emerald, right? The crystal is very strong. <coughs> it has a lot of uses that the Ilium doesn't really have anything like that. But yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, I mean, yeah, they want new players to basically get a year's worth of progress in like a month or two, right? That's what they're or maybe 3 months at, at max, right? That's kind of what they're trying to do, to push people through the game so fast that a lot of more content opens up and that basically normal lucid normal will and probably into hard lucid becomes available to them within one summer. 
which for a lot of people, they've never played that content, right? So that's very promising for them to get access to that. And you who've worked very hard on one character to do it now, you know, you can have, you can double up. So it's still good value for you as well. Um, so it, so should I say that the, the questions you have might be mainly on, um, on the equip specifically for the character or for, oh wait, these pictures aren't loading for some reason. Oh, okay. They do when I click them. Mm hmm well yeah account wise um where are you at legion i mean legion comes to into mind right oh you're at 8.6 well you know we're definitely going to have to move some blocks around because this is uh probably worse than sacrix's legion if i uh if i'm honest <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so the general um stat priority here. Yeah, it depends on where you're training, of course. Like as a, so the main thing is first thing is you want to kill things as fast as possible, right? Kill them uh within respawn timer, kill them quickly, preferably one shot them, especially on really big maps if you have to walk around big maps. And then once you can, you want to get as much drop as much mezzo, as much EXP from them, right? That's like the general order of things. Um, so when you're training things around your level, would you say you're able to one-shot them? Mm -hmm. And if not two-shot, because seven seconds, and you can cover the map quite well with Ilium, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so that's going to give you early on a boost and, of course, being able to kill monsters, but not necessarily as much as you can get from them, which makes sense if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to level up quickly. If you need to keep up with the arcane power, that's probably falling behind a little bit, right, as you as you level so quickly. Even though you get the leveled up symbols, it's still, it's, it's very quick to, <laughs> to try to catch up with, uh, try to keep up with that. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, see so like ten nine what is it, ten nine nine eight seven eight? Yeah, that's pretty decent, yeah. We got access to all the areas now. Oh yeah, I see it here, yeah. And uh, did you already buy the heart from the shop this event? Okay, so that's a... Uh, yeah. I mean that's a uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like this is the character that you wanna push further, right? So it's a prime candidate for getting that heart. And uh, pretty cheap stats at that. And then you're... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on how far you push them. So if you were to, you know, you push these specifically for um, for damage, right? Like, so the, the goodness power crest is already 27%. Um, but yeah, if it's already 27, feel bad, like, re-rolling, like, drop on that. You might as well just get another one and get another one for drop. Um, on the I is 18. That's decently, uh, that's decently good, but it's also decently easy to re-roll. So if you have, like, black bead marks or you want to go for monocles instead to roll damage on that and then re-roll this one for drop rate, that'd probably be a good idea. The main thing is now, it, the faster you're leveling, the more you're cutting the amount of days you play down, right? So that has an effect on symbols, but it also has an effect on um, your um, your amount of times you can kill dailies and weeklies. So when you need backups for later, so stuff like kind of treasurings, dominators, you know, and then further into superior and stuff like that, that's all going to slow down in level, at least for you. So even if you're doing helix every single day, you might be like already like go approaching like 260 before you even get like the helix set or something, right? Or even get superior Golix. So that's going to push back how when you're going to switch into like the, the the sweet water stuff as well. But so if that means that you're getting into hard lucid hard will faster and you actually can get like a twilight mark and you can actually get a black bean mark before 
you're switching into superior. That also means that you won't have to switch into re, uh, into Sweetwater yet. And the only value there for Sweetwater would be if you get a Papalatus mark. Um, and when you switch into superior to make your second pendant slot strong by transposing a Sweetwater pendant in there, basically. Um, so it would be a good idea to slowly start it up. But it's definitely not something you need very quickly because it really only comes into play once you go full superior. Um, you could, you could. I think what will make most sense is once you get to 250 on this one and you're quote unquote stuck on 250 for a bit, the arcane symbols will start catching up and your other stuff like your nodes and everything, especially with the Clover event, and I'll, you'll be get way stronger. And you'll be able to re-roll your existing uh, pieces that I, you have on the screen now into probably mainly into drop rate. In Mezzo, not as impactful anymore. Uh, maybe if you have a vec pad and you make sure that you can loot everything, but if you're focusing on the grinding and it's already your second or third character and you have a big legion like you do, I'm assuming that when it comes to like bossing mules, you already have quite some that you can use for that, right? Mm hmm Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, that's always the downside if you're looking for like the grass being that's why I'm I'm not a huge fan of job changing because I think it comes from you know, grass is greener syndrome where you you kind of tend to um take for granted what your character can already do and really kind of romanticize what the other class can do. It's like, okay, you're, you know, what your character can do, that's whatever. Um, it has maybe like two negatives, and then you see like three positives on the other character, and you're like, okay, this is more positive than this is negative, and then you switch over. But then you disregard the fact that the other character also has like three negatives, and then your character that you you got away from maybe had like eight positives that you kind of didn't, you know, actively see. And then, and then it turns out to be like a net negative to switch over. You have to restart your nodes. You have to get a good weapon, good secondary most of the time. And that can be a pretty big investment. Um, so are, are you planning to maybe like switch it back? or? <laughs> yeah, because I don't think Dark Knight is a bad bossing mule, right? You've got some good iframes. You've got some strong, solid uh, damage like over time with the spears. Very good uh, long-range damage as well. So you don't have to stay on top of the boss if you don't want to. But you can, and then the spear does more damage. Um, which it does quite a lot, actually, if you summon it right on top of the boss, right? Because there's that startup damage, where it does a little bit of damage over time. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, the yeah, I mean, fake Abzo is uh, is I think probably the best weapon for uh, <laughs> for a bossing mule because it's it's enough to be able to do all of them, and you have to invest, I don't know, like twenty flames, and it's done basically most of the time. So that's why uh, I'm a huge big fan. Mm -hmm. Well, you still have the spear, right? <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You said it had, so I don't know if you did something to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you have to really, really prepare if you want a job change, um, and I think that's it's it's a good thing why as well that the cost is pretty high and gets higher because you want to make sure that people are making a good decision. I almost would be in favor of making the cost on a character higher in the beginning to job change, and as you do it more to make it cheaper. <laughs> that makes more sense to me than the other way around, actually, because you want it to, to be more preventative in the beginning from people just accidentally doing it rather than like trapping them into having to keep switching and then ca charging them extra it almost feels <laughs> i don't know a little bit like exploitative right well yeah yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> well well the reason i i bring up the bossing wheels and everything and, and also to kind of gauge like where's your income coming from because if you're making a good amount of money in your account just by training and just by playing your your characters and and from bossing on the side characters 
then I would definitely prioritize going for full drop gear over a drop mezzo combo. You can still have like a few lines of mezzo if you want to, but I would mainly try to go for full drop rate so that you can get those rings, you know, the, you get those kind of treasure rings, you get those dominators, get all of those things faster. Uh, I just have an easier time with the harder boss drops because uh, that'll comparatively give you more value because that scales all the way up to 200%, right, from equips. It'll comparatively, comparatively give you more value for your whole account. Like, you know, if you get a bunch more primals and this guy has enough, you can start moving those around as well. That's almost like transferable rings. Um, that'll give you more value account, I think, uh, value, account value, sorry, the other way around, than um, going for high meso drop rate if your boss mules are already feel decently, um, you know, flushed out. So I don't know, what kind of income would you say you make weekly? Mm -hmm. And that's, in, is how much training is, in, is that including like Ursus and Maple Tour and how much training is included in that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but... Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, between Maple Tour and Ursus, that's like one build a week. Um, it's essentially very good if you're just starting out. If you're, you know, further in the game and it doesn't really line up with your schedule, it's whatever. But it is basically the money of like a pretty decent level 225, I would say, bossing mule that would take you half an hour. That's the same thing as doing like Ursus and Maple Tour every day, which is, I don't know, probably about four to five minutes per day, right? If you add that up over a week, that's also about half an hour. But there's no um, there's no startup cost there. So you can immediately cash, in on, cash in on that money without having to go do a character, have it in a guild, you know, maintaining guild skills, maintaining... You know, building up all the equipment on the character, um, getting buff freezers in case it's necessary, right? Um, it's a it's a lower entry, and it's like a free quote unquote bossing wheel that you have built into the game already. If you do that um, on a weekly basis, but if you make a four and a half to five bill, um, I'd say you're still in the build up phase. But I don't know if there were any characters, any other characters that you see that you that you actually do enjoy playing. Because yeah, I'm not gonna force you to play characters you don't like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 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 I agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but marksman is okay as well. You would uh, consider that one. Yeah, and for a lot of bossing mules, you'll have that where it's like it's just fine to log into it once a week and to just get the money and get out. Um, and the ones that you really like, you know, those are further to the left. Hopefully, you know, that's probably. Where the Dark Knight is, sadly, isn't anymore, but where the Ilium and the Wind Archer are. And hopefully more characters over time will just move a little bit more <laughs> in, in that direction by just doing dailies and doing events and getting the Monster Parker medal. All of that will just slowly move them towards that 250 mark. Um, I know other characters that you got to like 210 that you're considering. I know Demon Slayer is very strong, uh, even if you don't... Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. I would say those are very solid characters as well. Corsair is definitely in the in the uh, area of even if you put your skill transparency to to <laughs> to max, you could still not see what the boss is doing at all, so make sure you blow it. <laughs> that is very hard to see as well. Yeah, just bind and press all your buttons and then look out for the unbind, yeah. That's essentially how that is. Uh, okay, but that that already gives you a collection of like I would say like seven or eight characters, right? So if you can get most of those to like a bill a week, and then you add Maple Tour, Ursus, and some training here and there, you you, be, you can be pretty close to ten bill, uh, pretty quickly, right? Ten billish a week, which would be to double the income from now. So I think at that point you're really looking more towards getting the drop rate uh, as a priority rather than mezzo uh, as a priority. Uh, but, I, but I would work towards those as you feel that your base damage is going up, right? So w 
you could what you could definitely try is just unequipping like a bunch of equips and seeing if your kill speed actually goes down and i'm guessing it probably won't <laughs> um and connected with that and also allowing you to move into full drop rate gear would be uh to just double check a little bit on the setup because i know from uh for what i can tell from the legion grid is it's, we could definitely optimize some stuff there so i'm wondering is your hyper stats kind of in the same situation where you just like keep on adding levels or do you feel you're a little bit more diligent with that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah because we're looking at the bossing one now that one looks pretty good um so you would say the normal monster damage one is a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more messy Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it depends right if you would move to the next area the next level 245 you could go to moonbridge right and then immediately the requirement shoots up again so it might be if you if you want to make that jump and if you can make that jump with that then it's totally fine to keep the arcane power there uh, but if you're deciding to, because you're also going to be start thinking about familiars, right? Like, are you going to Asphera? Are you going to Moonbridge? Or are you going to stay and sell us a little bit longer for the easier EXP? But then make no progress on familiars whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you really commit them to a character as well once you do. So um, if you're not sure how to go about it, it's better to save them because then, you know, you tend to move around from character to character a lot. But then if you fall out of love with them and you invested all your familiars into a character, now you cannot get them back in any way. So that, I mean, I'm not going to say that's bad. Like considering how you play the game, it's probably for better that you didn't really fully commit to them yet. Uh, but we can get into familiars a little bit and kind of explain how they work if you want to. Um, so well, let me add that to the timestamp so the lazy people at home can follow along. Um, <laughs> YouTube diss. Um, so the main thing is that the familiars are, have only a little bit of value compared to how good they can be very early on. But even early on, they're very nice. So the main thing that you can find in familiars early on is IED and drop rate. So drop rate is already pretty scarce, right? You have your inner ability, you have coupons that are pretty expensive especially with legion coins if you're just starting out for you probably not as much because you've got a decent uh, legion coin income uh, but for a lot of people early on you know sources of drop rate are very, very scarce so being able to get that from fam familiars is really nice for that i would mainly look at the rare cards so the blue cards and uh, try to reveal those until you get increases item drop rate um just that line because that will give you 50 percent drop rate if you can get that one so that's that's very significant and then the only other ones that are useful at, at early on like i said is ied and even if you don't need ied you know how ied works right like mathematically okay um well so basically how id works is that it gives you that you know how much id you have it ignores that much defense that the boss has right so you have ID, the boss has PDR, percentage damage, uh, well, technically physical damage reduction. So if the boss has 100% armor and you have 90% reduction, you reduce 90% of the 100%, so 10% is left. So you get 10% final damage reduction on whatever damage you would do um, that comes out of your own damage calculator, basically. Um, but if the boss has 300% armor, which, uh, so let's say... Uh, I believe, oh man, I don't know all the bosses by heart, but I think once you get to like Akechi and CPAP, I think it goes up to like 200%, and Helix, I believe, is at 250, and then starting Lotus and Damien and everything above that is 300, until you get to like Saren and Kalos, I believe they are at 380. So if you have a boss with 300% armor and you ignore 90% of it, 
um, it's still 90%, but it's 300%. So now you ignore 270, so you're left with 30. So now you get 30% final damage reduction. So now you only deal 70% of your damage. So the higher you go, the more valuable the IED becomes because the bosses also get more armor. So, um, and then the lines of IED are all calculated individually, right? So if you were at 90% and you add a line of 10%, what you get is 10% of how much you still need to get to 100%. So you have 90, so you're missing 10%. If you add a line of 10%, you get 10% of the 10%, so you get 1%. So you go from 90 to 91. And if you add 10% again, then you get 10% of the 9% you're missing, so you get 0.9%, so then you get 91.9. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So ideal is a, is a tough number because some classes will have more than others because they have built in more. But generally, so that's why the progression grid is so useful, I think. So like I think normal lucid solo at the earliest is like somewhere early on in the late game here. So uh, you want to have functionally, you want to have around 93%. So that's why I mentioned functional as well because some characters might have built in boss debuffs, for example or buffs on certain skills, that won't show up in your stat window because it's not always active. It doesn't have 100% uptime, right? Because it depends on who you hit and what you hit them with. So sometimes you have to calculate for yourself what is really going to be the IED that you always send out. For example, if someone, so soloing is one thing, but what if you were soloing but you were a bishop, for example? Well, a bishop can debuff a boss for 40% IED. So you have to add an, ex an extra 40 IED on all your skills that the stat window doesn't show you. Um, so I think Ilium, I don't know if Ilium has one of those ID debuffs. Yeah, I mean, the one that most people have is you have your boost nodes, right? So if you rely a lot on boost node damage, then technically your functional ID is a little bit higher, right? Because you get the extra 20% on level 40 nodes and higher. And then the other thing is the uh, if you have the Explorer mages that's another nine percent debuff so that goes over that as well which is not you know huge but it is pre pretty nice so if you're at around 90 percent now and you would add um so for familiars you can pretty easily get ied because they um that is visible in both common and in rare familiars so if you open up a lot of familiars at, on average you need to open up i think around 90 or so to get one ied line um, and you can pretty easily get the two slots, right? I don't know if you've already opened the second slot or not. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. <laughs> well, because all you need is one badge, so you can pretty easily get a set bonus from one of the higher level areas. There's even one, at least one, that gives you percentage magic attack, right? So if you get that one, then you get even a little bit of power out of just equipping the badge. Um... Yeah, they give stats as well. So if you hover over them, you can see which ones you need on the right side. And on the left side, you can see the badge stats. And under equip, you can equip up to eight badges. And then all of these stats here, they will give you. In the beginning, it's almost nothing. But, you know, the further you go into the game and the more you're min-maxing on everything, it can be quite nice because there's like critical rate, damage percent, attack percent, magic attack percent, IED as well. So it's just a little bit of those things can add up together as well on which badges you get. So I believe it's the... Um, like the Sphera one gives 1% critical rate and 1% damage. That would get you to 100%, right? Because people are already getting triggered at your 99% <laughs> critical rate. Um, and I know the Aqua one is 100% is one magic attack, but that one's really hard because Seraph is only from... Uh, is very very low drop rate. Oh, the Void Batch from Moonbridge is 1% magic attack. So once you level, if you go there, you just get all the Moonbridge monsters. Or you can get them now on your Wind Archer if you want to. That'll give you 1% uh, magic attack and 2 magic attack. So that'd be nice, yeah. So all you do here is you just click them. So like if I un unequip one here and I quit, click this one, then the stats will change. Like that. Um, yeah, and you can see on the list which monsters you need to make sure they have a little bit of all of them and then just open them up. And then when you open them up, they will show up here in your collection. And once they're all in your collection, then they'll show up and they'll be colored here as well, like this. And then if you don't write there, they'll, they'll be black and white. And then once the badge is complete, it'll show up here. And then you can click it to get the stats. And then once you have one badge at least completed, you'll get the um, the rower, the familiar, will pop up again here. 
and then you just click on it and hold down your NPC chat for like three minutes because it's like a huge <laughs> wall of text. Um, and then the second badge will appear. So if you can get the rare increase item drop rate and two ID familiars, either rare or common, I would advise to open commons because they seem to have slightly higher chance because they have less variants. Plus they're not as valuable to rank up your familiars, uh, which we can talk about in a second. So, it, so they have better value for opening the potential and less for other stuff. So those would be the optimal ones to open for IED, I would say. Um, and that is pretty valuable for this character, but also very valuable, I would say, because nothing else will really come from familiars at that lower level for uh, bossing wheels. If you want to make them more viable to just get two lines of 15% IED on them, it'll just save you a whole bunch of money to fund them. And those cards are basically free funding that's sitting in your inventory. So if there's a character that you, yeah, if, if there is a character that you do like, and uh, I would definitely advise in the beginning to open up the cards on other characters that are, uh, that you don't have too many of, um, because, so later on in the game, what you'll like to do, especially on a character that you know you're really gonna be playing, uh, what you would wanna do is you would want to make sure that you can get higher level familiars, higher ranks, so like epic and maybe unique because they can get much better lines. So Epic, you typically go to chase the large drop rate because that's 100% drop rate. That's even 50 more than the than the Epic one. And that's typically the, the one that people go for, you know, to get even more droplets and more nodes uh, and more familiars so that they can make unique familiars. And that's where people get the high IED, high boss damage, large healing, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, totems were used to get everything, right? So so a bunch of the things like familiars will just, it, it's directly correlated or causated by the amount of monsters you kill. So you will, our monster kills are gonna go down inevitably without totems. So the speed with which we can get familiars is gonna go down as well. Which means if you wanna go to like end game, you know, boss damage, healing, ID, familiar setup, um, that's on average, it's gonna take longer. But it's still a goal, because it's still, you know, high source of damage that keeps stacking with what you already have. Um, yeah, so if you know you're gonna be playing a character for a long time, you really enjoy it, uh, eventually getting to Epic. So to get to Epic, you need to level up your card to level five, which you do by summoning it and killing monsters near your level. So ideally you wanna have at least two slots available and then later maybe three, but that's mostly easy once you get to like level 255 because a lot of the badges, you need 10 badges to get to the third slot, right? So that's way harder than the second. Um, but a lot of the areas have badges that are very easy at the higher levels, like the 255, the 250, the 245, the 235. Like those are all very easy. So you get some free badges that way if you just go get, kill the monsters, you know, get one card and, and move to the next, uh, to put move to the next area. Um, and then a lot of people like, well, now it's not gonna be as necessary anymore, but like during totems, people would like to get three slots. So they could have one slot for the drop rate familiar, and then the other two to level up two familiars at the same time so they can uh, rank them up to the higher rank. So you need to kill monsters with them summoned, so you get to level five. And then the other thing you knew, need to do is you need to fuse other cards that are the same name monster card onto the card. So typically you use a rare as your base card because you know, that avoids having to level up a common to rare first, which takes way more resources than just starting with a rare card because they're common enough, right? Uh, well, common enough, bad word there, but <laughs> they, they, they're, uh, they're easy to get. Um, and then you have, to do, you have to fill up the fusion bar and then end the level. And then once both of those are filled up, then you can um, attempt a rank up to Epic, which will completely change their potential. And then you just reveal them like you would any other card. And the, I believe it's something around, well, on a totem, I know it was like 15 to 20 minutes. So yeah, depending on how quickly you kill, it's probably like at least around half an hour um, off totem. Yeah, you can see these, for example, already level five. So I have already killed with, uh, with these summoned, but I never fuse them. So if you go to the fusion part, um, then you'll be able to take other cards that are the same name, but that are not locked and you'll be able to fuse them in and then this bar will go up here. So see for Epic, you need to go to 150 and for a rare, uh, is a rare? you need to go up to 100 points. So common is one point and the rare is two points. So it'll be very easy to fill the bar. 
and then rare to epic is 80% chance and epic to unique is 40% chance. So that's why you want to make a lot of epics first to get that large drop rate. Uh, and then you can, if you want to, you can enter the hell that is uh, <laughs> that is making unique familiars. Or you can keep making epics because epics can also get ID and uh, boss damage, just slightly lower chance and lower numbers. But that's kind of up to you. Yeah, yeah, in the commander there's all the details and then you can definitely check... Uh, if you if you get it right with me or with anyone else in the chat, you can double check if you if you understand it correctly. But that's generally what you, uh, yeah, how you can chase the the right familiars. Um, and we talked about the the drop rate. Um, drop rate gear. Okay. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Yeah, so the other thing I was going to say that's connected with, uh, you know, making sure that you can switch into drop rate gear, like partially, you know, being the nodes and the symbols and everything, w WCSE seems good. The other thing is making sure that you capitalize on your, um, your base stats through the upgrade systems, right? So optimizing, basically optimizing your, um, let's see, optimizing your um, hyper stats and Legion Grid and link skills, right? Because that's all that's all definitely combined with each other. So the main priority is, um, well, there's mobbing and there's bossing, right? Um, but for bossing, this looks pretty good. Like your hyperstat looks good, but then if I look at the Legion grid, it looks a little yikes. But the th question is like, why is your priority so different between those two? Is it just laziness on one? Or is it, do you not know where to prioritize? Because they're very similar stats, right? The stats you are looking for in your link skills, in your Legion grid, in your hyper stats, there's a lot of overlap between those. So you have a lot of space and you have a lot of overlap. So I think it's to make sure like, so I will just ask you, what do you think is the most important stats? If you're gonna be bossing, what, what do you think is the most important stat in in all of possible bossing stats if you take it like let's say we're going to do lucid what is the most important thing first of all id okay and what would be very and why is why is that can you give me the reasoning for that well mm -hmm, but like specifically like mathematically because i explained to you like how the id works right and what happens when you have low id Yes, final damage reduction. That's the key word there, right? Final damage reduction. We're always going to be looking for, if we can prioritize anywhere for damage, it's anywhere that gives you pri final damage or reduces your penalty to final damage. That's always going to be high priority. So that's why IED is very high. So with that knowledge, what is what does also give you final damage on something like Lucid? Yes, critical damage is a final damage on critical hits. So... That means that what is slightly more important than critical damage? Um, no, what, what do you need to hit a critical damage? Yes, exactly. Critical rate is slightly more important, right? Because if critical rate isn't 100%, the critical damage doesn't get fully applied. So that's slightly more important, but they're very close. There's another thing that gives you final damage on a boss like Lucid that's visible in your hyper stats. You might not need it, but it's still there, so it's important to consider it. And that's arcane power, right? It's an arcane power boss, so you need to meet that requirement. That can give you a lot of damage. Now, the base for Lucid is very low. It's 360, so to get final damage plus 50%, you need to get to 50% higher, which is 540, which you already have, so you're good. But if you're going to the next boss, which is Will, the base amount is, oh god, maths, is it? It ends up being 1140, so it's like 860, I think? No. 780, 760, 760 base to do normal damage. And if you want to do 50% final damage extra, it's up to 1,140. 
So there, a lot of times, if people are just scratching, like trying to do hard will, it might be actually way more important with points in the hyper stats in Arcane Power, and maybe even an event in Arcane Power like this one, so that you can get closer to 1140. That might give you way more damage than you know, a little bit of boss damage or a little bit of ID and maybe getting all the other ones from like level 11 all the way down to like 8 doesn't take that much away from those but then gives you an extra 20% final damage or, you know, from the 30% interval to the 50% interval that might actually be bigger in arcane power. So that way it's important to to keep realizing that that's, uh, that's a high priority. Uh, okay, so we've got arcane power but might not necessarily be there and IED and we want critical damage so critical rate and then critical damage and then boss damage uh, Yeah, and then what's left then? Well, that's because it's not that clear anymore at that point everything is very close So that's why it doesn't really stand out to you anymore at that point. It's really it's just a combination of uh, in link skills do you need some extra utility, right? Do you need some survivability that will actually help you a lot? Because at that point, the only alternative is weapon attack, magic attack, and it's like flat stat most of the time. So utility comes into play there. Because if something, you know, a little bit more uh, weapon and magic attack can make things faster, but if that goes at the expense of your survivability, that's not great, right? So at that point, you're going to be looking for, is there a survivability you need? Then you would prioritize that over a little bit more stat. Uh, one link skill I like a lot, but that isn't super efficient or, you know, from that's from the get, trying to get the most damage. I like the Cygnus uh, link skill a lot just for the extra elemental resistance so you don't get stunned as long. So I like that a lot on Lotus, on Hard Lotus, on just other boss fights where you can get like stain chun is chain stunned. Wow, hard word. Um, I like the Cygnus link skill there a lot because usually it's coming in at link skill number like 11 or 12 anyway. So it's already, it's not taking the, um, it's not taking the spot of like a super duper useful link skill at that point, but like a decently useful one. And I'm okay with taking like a little bit of hidden damage there, but getting some utility out of it that might give me more survivability. Mm -hmm. And yeah, do you feel like it, that, that helps you? Have you tried without it as well? See if it makes a big difference. Mm hmm yeah so it's yeah mm-hmm so yeah so if you don't notice the difference you can always try with another one and see like oh I don't really feel like I'm dying more but I'm getting a little bit more damage and then that would be a plus for you and then maybe another character you're like oh with this one I do notice a difference so I'm going to play it here and this is this is where personal preference comes into play and where class difference also comes into play um, but we did talk about the, the the priority of the stats, and you have that in your hyper stats. But when I look at your legion block, you don't have the same prefer the same priority here, right? Because your critical damage is completely open, or pretty much completely open. So if people are talking about like redoing your grid. That's mostly what they're talking, right? So I would definitely look at the blocks here in the bottom right. And boss damage is quite messy. There's six extra overlap. Plus there's some overflow here of at least three blocks. So that's nine extra here that you can take away that can go into critical damage. Uh, there's two extra overflow here and the luck. I would definitely take that part out. So that gives you four, five, also nine, 10, 11. And then this will just fill that in. So that gives you 20 more in the critical damage and your critical damage right now is at seven and a half. So you'd want, um, 20 will give you to 17 and a half, so then you need five more. So then you take an extra five out of uh, magic attack. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Make sure no overlap in boss damage, no overflow on the bottom right. Five out of magic attack, everything out of luck. Clean up IED, and then you can fill out critical damage as well. And at that point, you'll have 12 and a half percent more critical damage. And the only thing you're losing for that is, uh, compared to this, is four magic attack. And some normal monster damage and some luck. So that's a really big trade that you want to make. That alone is going to help you a lot because like we said, like critical damage is quote unquote, a final stat, a uh, final damage stat on critical rate. And right now you have 73 and a half, right? On crits, the base is 30 to, f uh, fuck, is it 30 to 50? I think it's 30 to 50. 20 to 50. Okay, I knew something was wrong with it. Okay, so the base critical damage is 35%. So right now you're hitting 108.5% final damage. So if you can take that up to 121, um, then you're doing, 
what is it, 12% more final damage? Just by moving those pieces around on bosses. Yeah. So if you combine that with the getting the, the ID familiars, right? So to take your your um, uh, ID from 90% and we had two lines of 15. So we get 1.5 on the first one. Then we go to 91.5. And then we take 15% of 8.5, which is... Uh, we got 0 0.85, 0 0.425, 1 0.275 to 9.2... 9.3... No... 91.5 and 1.25. Yeah, so 92.75, which means you only get 7. Point, well, you're a little bit lower, so let's say 7.8 with 7. Oh, calc. 7.8 times 3. So 23.4% damage reduction instead of the 30. Yeah, so instead of doing 70% of your damage on the bosses, you'll be doing. 76.6% of your damage, so that's almost 10% final damage increase there. Um, so the total, you know, for a total damage increase, um, that is pretty nice. So if we do 0 0.7 times 1.08, and then the other one you do 0 0.766 times... Um, 0.21 and then we do 0. Point, just to visualize how much just shifting a few things around can already make a difference right uh, oh no wait the other way around 0. 0.92686 divided by 0. 0.7581 22.26% final damage increase. So if you switch your matrix around and get two 15% ID familiars, you're going to do more than a fifth extra of your damage. Yeah, and it because it seems small, and it, it it is rather small, but it comes down to cashing in on the value you've already earned. You've already earned these blocks, right? The only thing, the last thing though that the game is making you do before you fully actualize it is putting it in the right spot. So what you can do for this if you don't like it, um, do you know about the Legion Solver? Okay, if you don't like Legion, this will help you out, okay? Seen this before? Okay, so let's say that you want to, um, so what our goal is, so the main thing is you have 42 characters, right? You can put in 36 characters. So you're going to look for making sure that there's 36, your 36 biggest characters are in here, right? So the priority for which characters you put on board, number one, the characters with the most important um, member bonuses, right? Those are the most important. So like critical damage, make sure that the Hayato is in there, right? Those kind of things. Then the second most important is the size of the pieces. Make sure your highest rank characters are in there. And then the third, you know, and then probably you're going to, if you, your Legion is as big as yours, you're going to get to a third category as well. And then you'll pick the characters that have the highest uh, raid power, right? So as long as all of those are in there, then you want to get to 36 characters within that because that's how many characters you're going to be put in for a long time until we get to 9K, right? Which will be maybe never because <laughs> it gets really hard after 8.5. Um, so you get the 36 characters. So it'll be something like, it'll look something like this, right? I don't know what the exact numbers will be, but what you'll end up with is mostly 200 plus characters and then a few 250s, right? So you see that you have 152 spaces that you can fill unless you have um, lab pieces, which you do, right? You have both of the one lab piece. So that's an extra um, um, thief lab, right? An extra one of these. Yeah, so you'll get to 37, right? That's important. Uh, and then you go by priority, basically, right? So we want, um, do you need any critical rate? No, we're going to get the critical rate from that, um, from that badge, right? <laughs> so we don't need any here. What you could do, yeah, what you could do is maybe a little bit of critical rate here is good if it means that you can get a lot of hyper stats free or if it means you can unlock an extra link skill slot, for example, right? And this is something you can pu puzzle around with a little bit. So let's say that, okay, we fill in the magic attack. What was the magic attack? Minus five. 
Um, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see that if we take maybe like 10 out of intellect or something, or however many you can take. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, 10, exactly, yeah. Um, so that's, uh, because that would be, oh God, you know, six left, 10, 16, I don't fucking know. Is it, oh wait, no, it's 50, right? You'll take 50 out of intellect. Let's say that that, and you put that 10 into critical rate instead. Maybe that opens up, I don't know, like 80 points in your, um, hyper skills or something and maybe that can put six extra in boss damage and then if you uh maybe that'll increase your damage and all maybe um or maybe that allows you to take a different hyper um a different link skill maybe that way because maybe you're over on crit rate because you have the phantom link skill for example and maybe with 10 percent that's enough to get the phantom link skill out and maybe you can put another link skill and that gives you more than 40 intellect so at that point you can you can start switching around maybe so that's probably also when people are talking about like oh maybe take different hyper um sorry different link skills is because they don't know exactly it'll depend on how big your legion is and on how high your level is that determines you know how many hyper stats you have that'll all determine how the things move around um but i'm already keeping in mind like the most popular link skills and i already see your critical rate right so and and your ied so i already have an idea of where those probably are even though i haven't looked at them yet so therefore, I feel pretty confident that with this big of a legion, I would just prioritize those important stats because the only thing you're going to be missing out with that with this size of a legion is like a little bit on the magic attack. And it's it's probably better to just already block that in in your legion and then build the other stuff around it. That makes more sense because you can fill up that boss damage. You can fill up that critical damage. You can fill up the ID and have enough space for critical rate if you need it, right? Because we can just take it out of magic attack and out of intellect and then you'll still be fine. Because again hierarchy of stats right magic attack and intellect are on the bottom there they're good but they're at the bottom still um so um so basically you can use the single collector right here so we're going through the bottom right because we don't need to go through critical rate then you do region click because we just want these to fill and this is already looking quite good um and then the size of your pieces might be like slightly different um because you don't you don't have all level 200s in there or do you Yeah, yeah. There's one here. Yeah, there's at least one that's a blaster because it has IED. Looks like it might just be one. Yeah, just one. Okay. Uh, space to be filled. Board space is filled. Yeah, so there would be like one switch with one here, right? Like that. So you get 155. Um... Oh, it looks like you do have some extra that maybe I mathed out a little bit wrong. See see how much more efficient this looks, though, compared to, like, your picture, right? Like, or, <laughs> well, that one, right? If you see this instead, you're like, it because it doesn't look like there's that much wrong going on. But if you look compared to this, you're like, oh, wow, like, this can just be completely filled. And, and you have, like, three left over now. So I can still do, like, one, two, three in crit rate, for example, if I want to, or one, two, three in luck. And this is also why for some characters, 9k or Legion and, or maybe even higher is very important if they rely on uh, buff duration, right? Because then you'll be able to go into, because into, uh, buff duration for final damage can also matter a lot on like an Explorer Mage, right? You play Fire Poison. There, that can also be final damage for them. So then you would probably have um, critical rate, you know, critical rate and ID first, then critical, da then, then probably buff duration, then critical damage, and then boss damage if you have left over. Because, th so then, boss damage goes down because you have access to more boss damage through things like familiars, right? And that's when your familiars become more important as well. So I'll probably go into crit rate. Why? Because that will take pressure off of your hyper stats. And then you can even like two levels because so your critical rate was at eight. So if you can go two levels down in hyper stats, um, that'll be like an easy 40 to 50 hyper stat points, which will give you an easier IED damage, boss damage, right? Or, or the next level up. Um, so then you click start. Boom, done. That's how you put your pieces down. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you're, if you're yeah. <laughs> so you could just completely clear it and just start dragging them in, right? And that's that's all there is to it. If uh, I like the puzzling, I like the Tetrising, but if, you know, judging from your buildup, it's not your number one priority in life. So, um, oh yeah, maybe there's a little bit more overflow here than I thought. Oh yeah, there's one, two, th uh, one... One, two, three, four. Over yeah, there's a bit more overflow here than I counted. Yeah. So then you can just copy this. So that's under Legion, the last link there, building grid, Legion solver. 
Uh, I joked about this a while ago that it would be really cool, a long time ago, that would be cool if somebody made that. And then like a year later, someone's like, oh, some, holy shit, somebody made it. So this guy, Gina, uh, Xenogen, <laughs> actually made it. And yeah, it works like a charm. Um, here, like iterations, he, they did 24,000 computations and took them 57 milliseconds to do that, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> that's a bit faster than your brain can, uh, can do it. Um, yeah, so I would do that for your Legion and give yourself those ID familiars. D definitely get the heart. I think there's a free Android coming with the upcoming um, patch. Uh, and I hope it works with the heart. I don't know 100% sure yet, but it has a shitty heart with it anyway. So it might not be a huge loss anyway if it doesn't work. Um, otherwise, you have to buy the heart from the shop now. That's 1,500 um, ignition coins to make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but then you just have the heart, right? You need an Android for it to work. So either the event Android or the um, or the one in the shop now. Um, yeah, and then the next ring. Do, uh, do, do you have the next event ring coming from the login stuff? Yeah, if you were like one or two days off, it should be really soon, yeah. So ring slots are filled, and then you can um, fill another ring slot if you want. You can get the, you can upgrade, sorry, you can upgrade this ring. I'm usually not a big fan of that, but you can also get the um, the Treasure Hunter John ring, right? That's a pretty, it's like a golden ring. It's a, it's a quest line in NLC, very short quest line. And you can easily, uh, it's like level 120, so it goes, uh, it got potential, it goes up to legendary, all got, it's all got the good rates, you only have to get like 11 stars on it or something. It's a very easy one to fill an extra slot with if you need a drop rate or mezzo ring, like in a short term. And you can keep it as drop rate forever, basically. Um, yeah, so between those things, and then you're, yeah, you're gonna be chasing Helix, right? That's the, uh, that's the big next step. Because um, you can slowly do some commercy in the background, and then once you get to full Helux, uh, these pieces will be well. I would already start moving these pieces into becoming drop rate because I think you're probably overkilling monsters now more than you might even think. And as you get stronger, you're basically going to be losing out on extra nodes, extra droplets, extra that kind of stuff. Uh, and especially if you get into the next area, extra familiars. You're going to be missing out on that because you're just going to be overkilling monsters by having damage on your accessories rather than the utility. So I would slowly just, maybe one by one, just slowly wean off. Because um, you're probably not even training with guild skills on, right? Yeah, which you could be doing. And that's so much damage. So that'll, give, that'll help you with the transition. Um, oh, and we could do the other setup, I guess, for, uh, for Legion. <laughs> Um, so if you're mobbing, what's the priority? What's the priority here? What changes? Mm -hmm. And where does the normal monster damage come from compared to bossing? Like, what? Which spot does it take? It's it's more obvious than you might think. It's the boss boss damage. <laughs> Because the boss damage only does damage to bosses, right? And normal monster damage only to normal monsters. So they just perfectly, um, they perfectly take each other's spot. And then IED is not needed at mobbing either. So typically, if you have the space for it, IED uh, moves away for uh, bonus EXP. So other than that, the priority is exactly the same. Yes, exactly the same. So we're again going to focus on getting, well, we can get three crit rate, right? We knew that from the last uh, setup, which means we don't have to go here. We can actually have the crit rate be somewhere like here. And then region click this, critical damage uh, and normal monster damage. So if you want to connect them, we can do something like this. Uh, we can connect through the top if you want to. What's over there? Abnormal status resistance. Um, if you connect through here, we will actually get luck which will be better than abnormal status resistance and that gives uh oh yeah and then we fill this and we fill this and that should be that's a little bit more now oh yeah because we're bleeding over into the beginning but we do need the crit rate 
so we take a little bit out of one of these. I don't know, maybe something like that. Does that work? Yeah, that works. So you make one of the, the ones that completely filled will be intellect, the other one will be magic attack, and then the other one will be luck, and this will be whatever. And now you have your mopping setup. Yeah. If you don't need all this normal monster damage, uh, for people who have lower legions, if you don't need this much monster damage because you're overkilling, then you can go into the uh, bonus EXP faster, right? But don't go into the bonus EXP if you're not already full map clearing, because then your points will be better spent on getting your damage up first so you kill the monsters faster, and then once you kill them fast enough, then you can increase the EXP you get on them. And same thing for the hyper stats, right? So the IED and the uh, boss damage, not necessary at all in the hyper stats setup for training, and instead it's going to be a combination of um, normal monster damage and EXP. Mm -hmm. And then for link skills, you have the same priority. So we can look now at the link skills as, and with everything we talked about now, um, what would you change in uh, in these setups? Mm -hmm. And which context did you hear that for, for bossing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And for which one? Yeah, and they probably said that for, I'm guessing for time to prepare, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a question of do you really need it? If you're full map clearing, um, when it comes to mobbing, as long as you have, because um, I think that's probably where the things come in. If you're mobbing and you're killing fast enough, especially if you're optimizing the grid, you're going to kill faster. There's one big thing that we talked about before when you're mobbing. What can you start doing when you're killing the monsters fast enough is you can increase the EXP per monster, right? So one thing you're going to be looking at more is getting the Evan link in there and getting the Aaron link in there for more EXP from the monsters you're killing. So if you're going to think like, okay, I want to get more EXP from the monsters, where is that most likely going to not hurt my kill potential? If I take skills out that are contributing the least to the amount of damage that I'm doing. So if you look at these, like which ones are contributing the least? Well, when you're mobbing, you want to be constantly killing the monsters, right? So things that give you damage temporarily or not with 100% uptime, those tend to be not priorities for mobbing. Those tend to be priorities for bossing because there you're looking at the long term of killing um, a single target, right? So it's like the resistance, the, the link skill for, um, for the explorer. Uh, mages, for example, that has to build up three debuffs on the target before it reaches maximum potential. That's not good for mobbing because you're going to blow up the monsters instantly, right? But for, for bossing, it's 9% damage, 9% IED fully stacked on the target the whole time because you're deba you're, you know, you're hitting it the whole time. So on a boss, it's really, really good. For mobbing, it's just shit. You know, and same thing for one of the one that's more common, of course, for you, it's not an issue, but is the Ilium link skill itself is like, okay, if you're moving around a lot, uh, people tend to be moving around quite a bit, especially now in mobbing, right? Because you need to go around the map. Bigger maps are better now. You need to go kill all the monsters. So Ilium now can be really good. But on bossing, there's only a few classes that really move around a lot in bosses. Most of them actually want to stay as, you know, <laughs> as stationary as possible, especially during burst. And you want to do the most damage possible during burst. But if the link skill is causing you to you know, <laughs> wants you to move during your burst and then ruining your burst to get the, then they're contradicting each other, right? So that's where some skills will make sense and others just completely won't. So one of the ones that I would say is very common when you're growing your account to get more damage and everything is the Keen Edge link skill. But I think at the stage where you're in, Keen Edge tends to be pushed down to like, I think like number 15 or 16 in both mobbing and bossing. So that one is typically just not used at all anymore unless you're trying to stat flex. <laughs> um, Kind of the same thing with hybrid logic, but that can depend on what area you're in. Um, and I think for bishops, probably hybrid logic stays in there because that makes their benediction last longer, right? Like you, your stat needs to be higher for that. So um, 
The one on the right is your mobbing one, right? So I would, the ones that I see that are a little bit like, in my head, like on the chopping block would be Keen Edge, uh, Thief's Cunning, Time to Prepare, Hybrid Logic, and possibly Cygnus Blessing. Those are all ones where I'm thinking, um, like, are those really necessary? So then you can look at all of your characters, look at all the ones that are available to you, and see, like, which ones would possibly be better. Now, c considering that you're strong enough, I would definitely try to get the Evan uh, and the uh, Mercy uh, and the Aaron in there. So those two slots, I would, I would definitely already take up. So that leaves, like, three more that are kind of, you know, like, do you really need those? Do you want those? So the reason that people would mention the uh, Beast Tamer and possibly the, um, the the even the Explorer Archers, right, just to give you more crit rate and, like, a chance to add to the monster collection, as shitty as that is, is because if that, if that crit allows you to move stuff away, most people have, like, a 6.5 to maybe, like, a 7k Legion, which means that they probably have blocks... Um, you know, depending on their stats, they have some blocks in critical rate. And just adding some more crit will allow them to move a whole bunch of blocks in their Legion grid into more damage, like into norm more normal monster damage or more EXP, and that'll be that'll always be beneficial for them. So they're like, why aren't you packing more crit into your link skills, right? You have a bigger Legion, your character doesn't need as much critical rate, so you're chilling. It's also not like you have level 12 hyper stats in, in critical rate, right? But if you had both of those, then the value for critical rate in your link skills would would go up a lot. So in your situation, I don't think you do technically need more crit. You'd probably want to use it in the bossing one though, because it has boss damage and critical rate, right? So there you can basically add their value together, because if you look at your uh, in your matrix, one block is one critical rate equals one block equals one critical damage. So they're kind of interchangeable. Um, again, if you don't need one, that means that your critical rate is going to come from your hyperstats, right? Uh, which, again, frees up hyperstat points, and then they can go into level 11, level 12 on the other ones. And that will that will create value that way. Um, what are the other ones? I'm not, for, for some reason, link skills I know is my blind spot. I can't think of all of them at the same time. I always forget some. So I just go to the link grid. And I just start from the top left, like, okay, which ones do you need? Crit rate, right? And this is why the priority is like this, right? Why is crit rate over here, crit damage over here, damage over here? Is because this gives you a lot of damage when you're mobbing, right? And then why is the, the priority like this? You want to stay alive, you want to get final damage, you want to get final damage, right? That's why they're ordered like this. And it all logically follows again with why do we prioritize certain stats over others. So if the Phantom, the Beast Tamer, and then the Archers, right? And then Night Lord is here because it gives crit rate in the uh, Legion block. And then the critical damage ones. So I think the Kinesis is the one that you don't have, right? Yeah, so that's critical damage. We want to get the Kinesis in there as well. Yep. So that would be the third one, I would think. And then there's two more slots. The Kana you have in there, the Ark you have in there, the Demon Avenger you have in there, right? Yep, that's Wild Rage, uh, Solus, and Elementalism. Wild Rage, by the way, goes to level 3 for the DA. If you have time for that, that's a really powerful level 3 link skill. It's just base 5% damage in both mobbing and bossing all the time without any uh, requirement. Very good link skill. Plus, it'll give you... Um, if you have, don't have him level 200 yet, which but I think you do, that gives you extra boss damage. Yeah, so it's really just 5% damage waiting for you to grab. So whenever there's an event like now with like find the spot the difference and stuff, I would definitely consider this uh, this character to try to get the level 3. And you could also do that for the Phantom, but considering how far your Legion already is and you don't really need that much crit rate here, it's just like a min-maxi, very late thingy to do. It's not as important as it is for some other classes. Uh, the Lara um, for mobbing, right, is also in there. Really good. The Ilium, of course, is in there. And the Hoyong is also in there, right? So from all of these, the only one that I would say that you're really missing is the Kinesis. And then the EXP comes in. And then, so then we have the Evan and the Aaron coming in. So it's really just you start from the left and you just make your way to the right and you just pick up everything you need. Uh, buff duration, we don't really need that because we're mobbing. Um, IED, we don't need that because we're mobbing. Um damage to bosses. So this is damage to bosses and to monsters, but it's more specifically um, catered towards bossing. 
So some of these like Cadena, again, you need a debuff. These you need to debuff, so not really useful. Demon Slayer, that's only boss damage. Adele does a little bit of normal monster damage, but is usually too low, especially when you're solo when you're mobbing, so it doesn't scale well. Angelic Buster is during burst. Uh, and then Kane, Shadower, Dual Blader, like they come in. But those are specifically, I would say, more against bosses. Um, so what does usually come in there? I guess it's just more stat. So which two... Damn, how do you have... <laughs> now I'm thinking, which one am I missing that I usually use? Because, um, well, th the great thing is now we can just build some presets, right? You build those two presets, boom, you just switch and you're, and Bob's your uncle. Um... Oh, I don't have a mobbing setup on this one. Well, that's just great. I guess the usual slots would be critical rate. And if you don't need them, so they would put in probably the Explorer Archer, maybe the Beast Tamer. And if you do absolutely don't need them, then the damage comes back. So that can be either um, Hybrid Logic or Cygnus Blessing. So I would look for um, solid damage, like 100% uptime damage. Or the one that you don't have would be the Jet Link skill. Have you, have you looked into that one at all? Mm hmm Okay, so the the link is basically like um, rolling potential on an item, kind of. So depending on the level of the item, you can get more total stats, and that level of the item is the level of your character. Um, I always forget exactly, but I think it's either level 100 or level 120 on your character. Either way, you have that. Um, is needed to hit the highest amount of total stats. And then you have three items that you can use on him. One is a cube that just randomly rerolls the stats that you have and also has a chance to tier up, which you want to use, right? To tier it up to get it to the highest rank. Um, and the highest rank is a uh, yellow, like unique basically, but it follows the other colors from item potential. So that's pretty intuitive. And then when you, um, those are called God, cosmic dusts. If you look up cosmic, it should show. Mm, it shows only th three of them. If it shows dust, does it show? Yeah, if you just look for dust, it'll show all three of the items. So, condensed supernova dust, that's your cube. So, that randomly rolls the stats and has a chance to tear it up. And then it gets to unique, then you want to keep re rolling. And it looks kind of like your traits, basically, where there's just like six points, right? There's the four main stats, and it has attack and magic attack, so it forms a hexagon between all of those, uh, between those six stats, and just randomly distributes them with every cube. Um, and then if if you get a lot, so you kind of have to look at what are you what are you maining, right? If you're mainly maining mages, you're just only looking for intellect and magic attack. If you're playing all of the characters. Sometimes people get two jets with two of the different skills and get one priority magic attack, one priority weapon attack. Um, I mainly play non-mages, so I have one with high attack and then with high strength and then okay decks is what I look for. But if you're just looking for two good stats, it's usually around, including all the tearing up um, and to lock it in for like a year, that's total cost of like two bill usually. And you can get up to around 30, yeah, like, uh, 35 is the highest you can get an individual stat. So if you can get around 32 stat, 34 uh, weapon or magic attack, something like that, and locking it in for a year, that's usually about three bill cost or something. Um, so the one extra thing is the shifter. So if you find the stats, the correct distance from each other, but they're not in the right spot, you can use the shifter to rotate them clockwise. So let's say, I don't know, where intellect and magic, atar, magic attack are exactly, but let's say that they're two pieces apart and you roll two really high stats, two, two pieces apart exactly, but they're like in the bottom, you can just shift them around and that'll lower the cost significantly. Of course, I had that and it was one off counterclockwise, so I had to go five times clockwise and pay like 240 mil, but <laughs> it's still worth it. So <laughs> I had the, like the, the worst possible location to have to shift it. Um, yeah, and then these, uh, the so the cosmic solidifiers lock it in for 30 days, and you can lock in for up to a year at a time. So anytime it goes under, you know, 335 days, you can use another one and extend it by another 30 days to make sure that it always works. Um, I find it helpful to put a reminder in your calendar somewhere 11 months in the future. <laughs> so you're uh, reminded to um, 
to extend it and because if you don't extend it it'll just randomly re-roll on the next day when it expires and then that money is lost which would be a shame yeah it's like uh, it's great it's non-kms and everything and uh yeah i mean you have those dusts that sometimes drop right that's how in non-reboot they have to do this so be glad that we can do it this way um so that'll give you way more stats and it'll probably give you like 1.5 to two times the value that a keen edge would, for example. So that's why that one is typically not one that's visible. And if people see you use keen edge, they're usually wondering like, ooh, there probably needs to be some updating on that. So that's for, for mobbing. And for bossing, I mean, you basically just, you know, you start from the top left, you work your way to the right, but then of course, you're gonna be skipping some of the damage ones here that are like, like Lara is not very useful here. Ho Young can be if you need the IED, but, you know, typically once your ID gets higher, and that's a spe specific, blah, specifically once you have either very good WSE or you get way more ID from familiars, but also once the superior Golix comes into play, right? That's usually when you get a huge chunk of ID, and then the link skills like the um, the Ho Young and the Zero, if you had that one, those will probably move over because they won't have that much relative value anymore. But when it comes to bossing, you have a lot more of the right ones in there. Um, the two that are probably like questionable and that could maybe move over that I would think when I look at it is hybrid logic and keen edge again, because they're comparatively not as impactful as the other ones. And the ones that I would replace them with would be the kinesis again, just because critical damage is such a rare stat. Um, and the cadena link skill, because there you're going to have that debuff that's replenishing. And that's going to, um, if you're a higher level than the boss, which you pretty much always are, unless you're doing will at like a lower level, pretty much always you're going to be higher level than your target. So that's going to give you 12% damage. Um, the other ones that are optional to get in there um, are, for example, the um, Explorer Mages. Um, so, okay, what does that give damage and IED? Um, that is probably in your situation. So if you were low IED, that would take the spot of something that's probably either time to prepare or thief's cunning. If you have enough IED, it would take the place of bravado because then you're replacing 10% IED with 9% IED and 9% damage, right? That's way better. Just one little percent, but 9% extra. Um, it could also take the spot of elementalism because it's only one less percent damage, but 9% more IED, right? In the same way, the explorer a mage link skill is almost a bravado plus an elementalism. So therefore, comparatively, those two are taking up a little, like a quite high amount of, of space. Um, and if you're in a full boss party, the Adele link skill is also very good because then it goes up to 12% total damage if you're in a six man party. So then again, that would overpower an elementalism or, or a bravado respectively. So it's basically, the, these two, the hybrid logic and keen edge are definitely early switches I would do. And then the ones on the bottom, so time to prepare, Thief's Cunning, because they're not 100% uptime. And then Bravado and Elementalism, because they're relatively lower damage compared to some other ones. Those could be switched out for Explorer Mage, for, uh, which ones did I just mention? So maybe Beast Tamer, depending on, if Beast Tamer gives you 10% damage, if it's level 3, plus critical rate, then it's basically an Elementalism plus 10% crit rate, right? So at that point, it just blows Elementalism out of the water. And then you have to think, is Elementalism the 12th one on the list? Or is Time to Prepare or Thief's Cunning maybe a little bit lower because of the lower uptime? In which case, one of them might have to get bumped down. So you just have like a hierarchy of the link of the link skills in your head. And you're like, which one is the first one to go compared to what you already have? Let me go see. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but does the logic behind it make sense so that next time, so one, and then if you have like the very lowest on your priority list that, that you know, survives as maybe Thieves Cunning, and then you're like, okay, I actually do get a lot of stun in this boss, this is very annoying, uh, maybe then you think of Cygnus Blessing, right, because it's, that one is probably like number 15 or 14 on the list, it's really close, so then you're like, oh, I need a little bit of extra, you know, resistance, boom, I take that one, or, oh, I need a little bit of extra IED, because this, you know, maybe my ID is still on the lower end is like barely 93. Maybe I want like going towards 95. And you take the lowest damaging one out and you replace it with an IED. And because what we talked about with, you know, final damage and everything, if you have like a total 500% damage skill, uh, you know, in your kit when you're, when you're bossing, um, and that skill only adds like 10%, that's only 1 50th, right? So that's 2% final damage. But what if the IED gives you enough, you know, to get 
like 3% final damage. Well, then, even though it's a small number and it doesn't seem like a significant link skill, mathematically, it still might be better in your situation. But... The AB link is once you feel very confident about setting up your burst and you're in a party that's pretty burst heavy, the the more you're starting to rely on your burst, so this is really once you're doing the hard bosses and like, uh, you know, hard Lotus, hard Damien, and going over in, into like Tenebra's bosses and everything. And really once you have all your link skills like at level three, that's when I would start thinking about, you know, your especially if you have like an Oz ring or something. Because then your burst becomes way more important relative to your overall damage over a longer time. And then things like terms and conditions become become very important. Because then you're trying to like cram <laughs> all of that damage, right, in those 10 to 15 seconds. And then you want to make sure that that is just done perfectly and does as much as possible. So that over the whole boss fight, you know, when you're like dodging and he's teleporting around, it's not that bad that you're losing a lot of damage there. Okay, um, yeah, and the logic between the link skills and the hyper stats and the legion grid and where everything goes, that makes sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, we didn't talk about the matrix at all, but I mean, it's getting pretty decked out because of the, because of the um, clovers, right? And you already kind of know the general priority I guess your um, decent holy symbol is a bit on the lower side. Mm -hmm. And you're not using all of your... Yeah, and I, I, I guess especially once you start really doing the harder bosses, the other skill nodes that you don't have in now, you really want to start leveling those, right? Like the beam and the... Yeah, that would be, I guess, some more specific Ilium questions of like which skills are like the highest priority there. But uh, every, anything that... Yeah, it goes towards burst is going to be more important, yeah. Mm hmm Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are just extras. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. I thought you had them level one and you hadn't, didn't have them equipped. But I see you have them here that are just not leveled as much. Yeah, the gate is pretty important early on for the mobbing, right? In between the gate and the... Um, oh, yeah, and you have this one at 23. Yeah, okay. I was I was confused for a second. I thought you had them all at level... Level one, but they're actually already leveled up here. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it helps you with your mobility on the bigger maps, right? Between the map teleports and the gate teleports, you can get around very quickly. And you got your boost nodes, nice high level. Yeah, I, I guess decent holy symbol I probably would level that a bit. If you have some more EXP nodes coming, just for the drop rate and the... Because even though you probably had a decent amount of nodes built up as well before this because of the Wind Archer, you probably were cutting into your reserves pretty heavily, right? And that makes any kind of... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So any other character that comes after this that you maybe like or that you want to build as a, as a bossing mule is going to have a harder time getting established because you don't have any reserves for nodes. So you want to always kind of build a little bit of a reserve so that if something else comes into play, you can give it a fair chance. But yeah, other than that, uh, I don't see any huge things you're missing. But yeah, if you feel confident with the Matrix, we don't have to spend too much time on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it's kind of hindsight, man. If you if you were to start a Wind Archer tomorrow, it would be better than your existing Wind Archer too. I mean, it should be. If it was worse, then <laughs> then you wouldn't have learned anything. So uh, you would hope that it would get better, right? That's a that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Um. Yeah, I guess other than that, that leaves us with the equips. Do you have any like remaining questions about the equips? Now that we talked about all the other stuff. Um, hang on, what we were talking about? Oh yes. Uh, let's guess. What were you What were you thinking so far? Let me see where your thought process is at. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's like your main thing, right? And why is that your main thing right now?
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can focus on Arcane because you don't need kill speed right now, right? If you were struggling to kill monsters now, then it would be... You don't want to be chasing Arcanes, but you want to make sure that you can kill monsters now so you can get to Arcanes faster, right? But now you have the luxury, because you're strong enough with your account and everything, and because of how well you play the character, you can do everything around your level now, so you can save up relatively more and set that aside for Arcanes. So that means that wherever we can kind of cut a corner, we're going to, so that we don't uh, you know, spend our funds that we want to be spending on Arcanes instead. So I think trying to go towards like a full set and going for higher drop rate is probably a good idea, and slowly moving... To, towards more drop rate out of the um, accessories, right? And then looking forward to where are the damage accessories coming from. So like you said already, like the Superior Golics from Helix and uh, some Sweetwater stuff perhaps, depending on how the luck uh, with drops of everything going. But I think it's a good idea to build the the, the, the narrow uh, backups on the, on the background. Um... Uh, the earring and the belt will drop from it. Yeah, so the ring and the pendant are the ones that you want to buy from the shop. Uh, so the main thing that's left is the accessories that you will, uh, or the items that you will keep the whole way. So that would be your CRA stuff, and that will be your your EBSO stuff will be kept uh, temporarily uh, until it goes into Arcane. Um, how was your, because uh, we just had Shining Star Force, of course, two days ago. How was your... How much money did you have when that came around? Okay, so the Abzo is still at 12? Yeah, that's the that's the main thing. If you go um, if you go higher on the potential early, it kind of locks you into having to upgrade the item itself, and then you have to get backups, which is rougher for Abzo, right? So generally, um, generally the advisable thing is to go higher on the uh, on the Star Force first, and try to get for seventeen first and then settle into the potential. So if for Abzo, you don't want to have to make a whole lot of backups, it's a good idea to get the level 150 equips up Star Force and just what's called foddering them. And then if you boom a bunch of them, it doesn't really matter because it's easier to replace, right? You have ancient root gloves and you can have like the Ramaru shoes and you can have, um, you know, the CRA cape, the, the, the not CRA cape, sorry, the, uh, the Caesar cape, yeah. Um, and if you boom those, it's not a big deal, right? Next week you can get another one from a drop and it's pretty simple. And then once you get them like past 15 or you get them to 16, depending on if there's an event, then you could transfer into the Abzo and then you can freely roll on the potential without having to, you know, deal with the transfer hammer and then reducing the potential again. So the other way around it tends to be better if you have like a total amount of money that's higher to, to spend, better do the other one first. Um, even though it feels riskier, you can mitigate that risk by using the fodder uh, and or by using events. So ideally with the Shining Star Force coming on, it seems right now that it's a pattern that it's coming around every six months. So we'll look at the upcoming Korean winter event that we should get the announcement for, or at least a teaser for in two days. If there is going to be another Shining there, then always keep that in the back of your mind that the next summer might have one. And then depending on which character you're playing or what kind of progress you're planning to make, Keep that in mind because it basically means that your money is is yeah it's worth like sixty percent more or something like that during a shining, so it'd be a shame if you can't like fully capitalize on that and make a whole bunch of gains in terms of star force on that. And because like a cubing a cubing uh, sale is more rare, and even when it is, it's not as much of a sale as something like shining or even then like a fifth five to fifteen is. So it's it makes more sense to cube off event than to star force off event. Um, yeah, other than that, I guess, like, slowly bringing up the, the flames, right? Um, and yeah, if you blew up all your, <laughs> if you blew up the abzos or they're stuck at 12, uh, in the short term, that would not be the place to push for damage. So I would mainly, um, if you don't want to be pushing those to 17, which I can understand, uh, getting more of that foundational damage from level three links, from moving around the you know the hyper skills, uh, the, sorry not the hyper skills, the hyper stats, the link skills, 
and the Legion Grid. That'll give you a lot of damage. Um, that'll probably give you enough to be able to party and maybe even like solo like normal Lucid. And that'll allow you to earn the weapon. And then with the weapon and with Superior Gallux, and then maybe with some Sweetwater stuff, you'll definitely be able to make the jump from normal to hard because uh, you'll have more levels, more... Um, matrix slots and your skills will be higher level as well so your total damage output will go up a lot by then yeah and there is a dmt coming but i don't think at least for this character that'll be very useful for you right no maybe a few accessories right if you have like the treasure hunter john ring and the event ring maybe maybe a second pendant yeah no, that's only the flame ring. The other ones just come as rare usually. Yeah. So maybe for the extra pendant and the two rings, right? The last piece is for your for your drop. Uh, and I don't know how hard you want to go, but if you want to make like another face accessory that has drop rate, because this one is already twenty seven intellect, then you can use that for it. That'll give you a decent de the discount. And. Uh, Maybe the heart if you can afford it. But again, th all of this is also contingent on how many boss meals are you activating, right? And how much are you can you can increase that weekly income. And that's um, yeah, not exactly where you want it yet, but it's 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 on a good build up, so. So that's nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's slow. <laughs> 700 per equip. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah, no wonder people do exchange carries immediately, right? Because, <laughs> God, it takes forever. All right. Uh, any other pieces of equipment that you have questions on or flames or stuff? Do you know how the flames work and how to go about that? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, if you see like 80 stat and 5 all, you know that that's really good. Yeah. Um, well, so th there is the flame calculator where you can just put the stats in if you're still doubting. So that calculator would just, would just give you the number. So all you have to do is check here on the top left if you're late game or end game. You're going far with this character, so I would just select end game because the, the goal of the flame score is basically to future proof. So you want to look towards the future with that. If you're on a bossing mule or something, or you don't know for sure how far you're going to take the character, you could take the late game one. Basically, the difference is, is that in late game, it'll value weapon attack a little bit higher, and it'll value all stat a little bit lower. And that's because the further you go, the more star force you get, and that gives you more attack, and that gives you more stat, which means that the attack will relatively lose some value, but all stat will gain value because you gain more stat that it multiplies with. That's basically why. Uh, and then you have to select here what kind of class you are, so your intellect main, right? And then you'll see it just intellect, luck, magic attack, and all stat. Those are the only stats that matter for the flame. Uh, you can put in any number. Let's put in the hat, for example. It's got uh, 24 luck, no intellect on that. It's got magic attack, I think, 5, and all stat 5. Boom, boom. And then you can save that here if you want to, say CRA hat and click save and you see it's 62.4 and then let's do the top for example top has 32 and 24 and i don't think oh i have it twice does it have any magic attack nope but it also has five percent all stat boom and we can do cra top wait was it a top i think it was right yeah and then boom and you see that this one is 17 higher and we could do the pants as well if you want to. That one is 40 and 36. And doesn't have any magic tech either, but it has 6% all. So this one is CRA pants. And you can see that this one is 97.6. So what does that mean? I mean, it means that the pants are definitely the strongest one when it comes to the flame score. And they're considerably higher than the other two. Now, does it mean... Does by these numbers, does it mean that you have to reflame any of them? Not necessarily, but since the difference is so big between these and these, like it's 50% more, 
This probably means that the hat can reasonably get a better flame without being too expensive. So if you want to get into the details, and this is all explained in the exclamation mark flames video as well, if you want to get like the full rundown. But what it basically means is you can check in the progression grid where I kind of give advice on how roughly, you know, how strong you want it all roughly to be. You can look at the flame score for items with advantage because that's what they are. And then you can look at what kind of score you're aiming for. And you want to look at the lower end because, you know, you have level 150 items, but then you have level 160 items and level 200 items and nothing else really has flame advantage that you wear that you want to get good flames on. So if it's everywhere, anywhere from like 85 to 105, then, you know, 105 is towards like level 270, right? Um, but if it's anywhere around 85 right now, then it's in a good spot. So you can see from the cost is that th this one is really close already, right? 79, it's only like 600. That's really close. This one is quite a lot above. And this one is a little bit below. So if you got a flame and you do this for all the characters and you can see uh, for all the items and you can see how far they are from like kind of the advised flame score that is in here, then you can see which one would be advised to throw the flames on and which one on average will give you the most value from the flame and that would be the hat. Now that means that if you put a flame on, of course, it means that you could possibly ruin the flame that the hat already has, but that's okay because you're pretty strong and just one flame on one item won't make a huge difference. Then eventually you'll redo this one and let's say that this one gets to like 85 or something. That means that after that, the top will be the lowest and then that will have the highest value for like per flame, basically. And that's how you can uh, how you can look at it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention with that is, yeah. So, and if you are not sure if it's worth like buying flames and stuff, you can always look at this and you can say like, what is a flame worth? So you can look at, okay, as your hat is 62.4. So let's put in like 63 because it doesn't take uh, the commas very well. Uh, for all stat, I take nine and then three and 10. That's, that's kind of important, right? To use the same value. So by default, it's set to eight here. So make sure you put that at least a nine. Uh, flame advantage, armor, powerful flames, 140 to 159. That's all correct, right? And then you calculate. So you see that the flame that you have on your um, on your hat is a median flame. Median is six flames. Average is nine flames cost. So anywhere between 57 and 90 mil. So now you see why that's that would be the top one that we would reflame, right? Because in terms of reproducing this flame, it's very easy. If you look at the pants, so you go for 98 with the same metrics. See that somewhere between 94 and 136 flames in value. So between 900 and 1.3 bill. So that's why we won't be reflaming that one very quickly because that's the value of that flame essentially. So you can think of like, is it worth, you know, if, if this grid says like, oh, you want to get it to 105, how much does 105 cost? Oh, it's between 1.7 and 2.5 flame. Beforehand, you can check, is that something I want to spend? You know, just because the metric says, you know, maybe I have 102, you know, but it says 105, is that three stat worth it? And then you can just see like, okay, how much would that cost? And be like, never mind, I'm just going to keep 102, or I'm going to keep 98, like that's close enough for me. So you can still decide for yourself, and you could use this tool to get an idea of how much is it going to cost. So if you're, yeah, because you're going to keep your ABSO for a while, and ABSO is higher... Um, level than CRA, right? So the ABSO on average is going to be getting even better flames than uh, the CRA. Uh, and you see you have 45 and four, and here has 60 and here is 56. So these are probably going to have even better potential for growth. Usually priority would be your weapon. Uh, it depends on how long you're going to keep your weapon, but the weapon tends to have the highest priority because of magic attack on it, right? Uh, and I was already looking at the uh, flame here, so you have a 73, but I could go to a 97 if you just get a tier 6, and you can check here as well. Boom, weapon, uh, tier 6, on average between 23 to 34 flames, right? So two 300 mil, not that bad, but that would give you a gain of 24 uh, magic attack, and 24 magic attack is 72, so that's more than the flame on your hat that you would gain just from getting one extra tier uh, although you do have 56 int, so you'd have to take that into account as well, right? So 56 int is around how much? Uh, well, it's 56, thank you, but that's about eight, 19, 19 weapon attack worth? Okay, that's about 19, so this is like the equivalent of 92. Does that make sense? 
with the extra intellect that you have now? Yeah, so you would only be gaining five magic attack, right? If you only hit tier six and nothing else. So that takes the value low down quite a bit about chasing that tier seven. Uh, so I was judging a little bit too quickly because I didn't see the intellect. So that's why it's important to look at all the flame stats and not just that one like I just did. <laughs> but I got myself, you know, before I uh, told you to start re-rolling. But so that's why, um, yeah, you look at the things you hold longer. You look at what has the biggest potential gain in flame score compared to the numbers that are advised here and that's where you would prioritize your flames but i would mostly use flames just as you get them from bosses and from events and typically i only buy them if the flame is really important so before you're transposing or on a weapon that's where i would buy flames other than that i would typically just wait for event shops and weekly bosses and that's why you want to get those weekly bossers and boss mules online because then you can get more flames for free and more cubes for free and more you know more money Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Wait, every time you look in your storage, you're like, oh, there's like another 20 there. Yeah, try to send them. Yep. Definitely. Okay. Um, we're we'll already a little bit over time, but we're, we're around the end of the session. Is there anything that you can think of, any topic? Um, yeah, I don't know what you want to do with the inner ability. That's probably also just the Ilium question on what is really good to chase there. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the question. If you... I guess the enemy hit by multi-target I wonder if it lost some value with totems being gone, right? No? Okay, they're saying that there's still enough targets to be hitting around the map and everything. Okay. Even bigger maps, yeah, you want the you want the portals to, uh, or the gates, right? You want them to be hitting, uh, I see. I guess, yeah, I guess people switch it once they just slow down leveling and once they're not leveling as much anymore which is i mean possibly never <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's up for sure with how slow exp already gets you want to take every little bit you can you can get yeah okay all right okay well, good. Then um, I'll send you on your merry way and uh, you can redo all the hyperstats and skills and grid and all of that. You'll, yeah, a lot of that is like hidden damage, so you won't really see your range or your stat go up at all. But that's why we have so many metrics in the progression grid, right? Because even though these are very important and people talk about them, it's these other ones that actually make all your damage. So um that's why it was a little bit math nerdy but that's why i just wanted to see what the number actually was just to see if what i was saying was actually that important but yeah as you could you could tell it was like almost 23 percent final damage right that's insane for not really doing all that much it's getting one one badge for your familiars getting two 15 percent id familiars which you already have access to you just have to re click reveal and then moving the stats that you've already earned like the like the grid pieces around and boom and then you know, normal lucid, and I, I, I think you'll find that your like your lotus and daemon runs will get way faster as well. And if you start doing slime and stuff, right, that'll be accessible way sooner. Hopefully, you get lucky for the slime ring earlier, so that'll that'll open up some uh, some avenues for upgrading. <laughs> You're like, oh shit, yeah, that exists. Yeah, there's so much in this game, man. <laughs> I'm waiting for that uh, boss, uh, that boss menu revamp so that it looks way prettier. I mean, we can see all the pictures of the bosses and see which ones we already completed. That'll that'll look so much better. But oh, oh yeah. Well, that one definitely will be able to do it. Yeah, probably just only one test, I think. It's uh, I don't know exactly how much, but it's a pretty big crystal. Let's see, crystal. Check press. Is it two? Oh, 170 mil. 171.6. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, you do that for a month. That's an extra six hundred and eighty mil. Yeah. That's nice. All right. Uh, well, I wish you the best of luck then, and I hope you enjoy the Ilium forever. I hope it never gets boring like some of the other characters. I hope, uh, or otherwise, you'll have a very strong bossing mule. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we, uh, we did it. YouTube. Oh, we did Reddit, but it's uh we did it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Pick uh, five digits up to a hundred k. Let's uh, pass copper sun. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, uh, best of luck, and uh, I'll see you around. All right, you too, bye-bye. All right, that was our friendly neighborhood Dutchie guy, and I just realized I didn't switch the audio on OBS, so I cannot upload this session because all of his audio is cut out. This is why I have a setup in the beginning, and I shouldn't rush into the session. Well, you'll never see this YouTube, but for the people on Twitch who saw this live, hopefully this was helpful to you guys and you saw something. Make sure on the other videos that I have on the YouTube <laughs> with sessions, make sure you um, uh, leave comments on there if you would like to win one of these sessions as well. Otherwise, use exclamation mark coaching in the chat, and I will um, yeah I will answer <laughs> any of the questions you guys have in the chat right now. I guess I'm gonna hang on. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube, and then people are gonna just think that they're crazy, like 15 minutes in. And we're gonna see how many people make it to the end of this video and get to this part. Leave a comment on the YouTube video if you thought you were crazy the whole time. Um, and if having half of the convo is better than having none of the convo at all, okay? Let me know. <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna upload it on my side, but I don't even know if uploading it, it uh, recording it on my side in case the internet went down. But I don't know if, if that holds the audio in the same preset. I guess I could check. Crazy fool you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks anyway for the 10K YouTube. To celebrate that, have a video with only half the audio. <laughs> Enjoy.